Okay, we're back on the Ember Twin Ash Twin version. Okay. So... Oh, can we just go to the north? Blah. Hello. This is Solanum's shuttle, right? I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I guess that body is Solanum, nah. Then, huh? I don't know. If, I don't know if we knew that before. I think maybe we just had a theory. Okay. Are we able to get to the North Pole at all? I mean, this is maybe a little bit closer. Like, as it stands. Yeah, if we try to go over, we're gonna get, like, sucked out, right? And it looks like that might be the case all the way around. No, 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 let's, let's chill, let's, let's be cool, let's not fling ourselves out of the moon, please. But yeah, this makes a complete circle. Okay. But this is a different location that we were in before. Maybe we need to, like, ride the quantum waves, basically, and, like, jump the tower across space and time until we get where we need to go? We're back on the eye. Still encased in rock. Okay. Dark Bramble. Maybe one of these planets, we must be able to get closer. Yeah, 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 actually it looks like Dark Bramble we can. Or like not one of the planets, but I guess like one of the permutations of this. Yeah, we're able to get way closer. Way, way closer. Yeah, we're like at the North Pole, basically. Okay. Okay, maybe this is all we needed. Now we just need the tower to show up, which... Ah! Jeez. Asking you shall receive. Okay. So... No, 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 don't do that. Oh, no, yes, do, yes, do that. Yes, do that. Go, 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 go. Okay, so door is closed. We're on the North Pole. Or, well, close to the North Pole, anyway. Okay. Maybe this will work. Or maybe this isn't close enough. Not close enough, I guess, to the North Pole. Okay... We're pretty close, though. I mean, unless I'm completely wrong on this, which I certainly could be. Um, so we need to be to a different location. Which, actually, this could be good. Yeah, because we're all... Yeah, 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 because we weren't able to get past that giant rock wall here before. There's like, a huge rock wall around the middle of this version of the moon. The Ember Twin Ash Twin version. But now we're, like, on the North Pole. We are actually smack dab on top of the North Pole. So... If we're able to get the tower to appear... Aha! Oh, yeah, here we go. We are direct smack dab on the pole. This is it. This is it right here. This is how we do it. Guaranteed. If this doesn't work, I have no idea. Oh, yeah, I guess we can tell by the floor, huh? Yeah, here we go. Come on. Oh my god, it worked. Okay. 
we are in business now. It feels pretty linear. Like... God, yeah, look at this. It's all the rock. Like, these, every shard we've seen, like, it is just this landscape. Wild. And yeah, but, like, yeah, look how linear this is. We are on a path. How much time do I have in this episode? I mean, we're a little bit over time, but that's fine. We are... We're approaching something big here. There's no way we're in finale territory. Not without having explored a whole planet, but like... What the hell is that? Uh... Should I be concerned about this? What the hell? It's, it's like the entire atmosphere is being sucked away. Look at that. Can we see anything through it? It kind of looks like the eye signal, huh? I mean, you kind of have to, like, maybe squint a little bit, but it kind of looks like that, huh? Ah! You're alive. God, you're alive. Hi? No way. How are you alive? Oh, I just got chills. Whoa, Whoa dude. Okay. Okay. Are you quantum? No. We're not quantum enough, anyway. Dude. Hi. Well, I know who you are. Where are we? Uh... We're doing hieroglyphics now, huh? This is so cool. Okay. Identify stone, explain stone, P me, quantum moon, eye of the... Yeah, 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 look at that. That kind of looks like the eye, man. And you, stone. Uh, well... Identify? Yo, look at this. Oh, it's so cool. It's so cool to see their tech in action. Bruh. Okay, identify you, I guess. Is this gonna... <clears throat> yeah, we're basically just like... Yeah, we're just playing pictograms, basically. I am Solon, I'm a Nomai. My clan arrived in this star system before my birth, and we now call it home. Really? Wait, can I match orange to orange? Wait, there's more? Oh, no, I was just taking it off. Explain and identify? I guess we can do that, huh? These are the two tenets of know my philosophy. To seek out and to understand is our way of living. Really? Uh... Explain yourself? EXPLAIN YOURSELF! What are we doing here? What is this? What is my purpose? Oh wait, no, they have to... Cool. That's so cool. I am on my first pilgrimage to the quantum moon. All Nomai and my clan make this journey when we come of age. Even though the eye cannot be reached from here, the quantum moon remains special to us as it carries us nearer to the eye than any other place we know. So I guess this isn't the eye then, huh? But if this isn't the eye, then what is it? I've journeyed here to be close to the eye. While the eye is obscured, obscured from our sight, we can see the quantum moon's reflection of the eye in the sky above us. Oh. 
So this, I guess, just like the moon copies other planets, it copies the eye? Okay. Okay, okay, so we should go through, like, each one of these, like, each explain and then each identify, I guess. Just to keep things consistent. What in the hell? There is fundamental uncertainty throughout the universe. Normally, this uncertainty is only observable on a very small scale. As one approaches the eye, however, that uncertainty grows enormously. The quantum moon probably exhibits macroscopic quantum behavior because of its proximity to the eye. Shards that broke off from the quantum moon have a similar effect, as I imagine you've seen elsewhere in this star system. Conscious observation forces a quantum object to collapse to a single possibility. That's why we've, like, I guess been able to trap it. But what would happen if a conscious observer somehow entered the eye itself? I mean, I guess it depends on what the eye is, right? There's fundamental uncertainty throughout the universe. Normally, this uncertainty is only observable on a very small scale. I know I read this before. I'm just taking it in. As one approaches the eye, however, that uncertainty grows enormously. That makes it sound like... It makes it sound like the eye is basically like... Or at least... Maybe not necessarily that the eye itself is, but the eye causes, like, raw creational possibility, right? Like, fundamental uncertainty. Nothing, nothing is sure, like, the universe is malleable, right? But then... That is the nature of being quantum is it exists basically on another plane or like it it's physical reality isn't sure until a being that exists in fundamental reality i guess as we understand it observes it and then now it is locked in place we've seen that with why like taking pictures of things works that's why like observing the rocks keeps them from teleporting around stuff like that Conscious observation forces a quantum object to collapse to a single possibility, right? But what would happen if a conscious observer somehow entered the eye itself? Over time, this has become my clan's greatest question. Well, I mean... Say my idea about the eye being, like, raw creative potential. Like, the fabric of the universe, malleable. Wouldn't that mean that, like, someone who goes in is able to basically shape, at least whoever's in the eye, to fit whatever they wanted? Like, that would be, like, heaven or nirvana or something equivalent like that. Paradise. Where you could, anything you could imagine, you could make reality. Maybe. Right? Uncertainty is only observable on a very small scale. I mean, maybe that's just wishful thinking on my part. That or just like... The second that... Yeah, maybe on a more realistic scale. The second someone enters the eye, whatever permutation it happens to be under at that given moment, like with like... Wherever the shards happen to be when you see them or whatever. Like that's just now... That is now the reality there? Maybe? Maybe? Until you leave, if you can leave? I don't know. Okay. So, they've explained themselves. Eye of the Universe, Quantum Moonstone. Have you encountered a quantum shard on another planet? We have. Many of them. The shards look the same as the quantum moon surface does now while at the eye. From this, we can reasonably infer the quantum moon's natural state is as we see it now, and that the eye is its primary location. Yeah? Yeah, I can see that. Given the quantum moon is the eye's moon, it's likely that any characteristics the moon exhibits are also exhibited by the eye itself. The quantum moon and its shards, for instance, are quantum, thus the eye is likely also quantum. 
In fact, this moon is probably quantum because its proximity to the eye made it quantum. The same way the areas surrounding quantum shards that landed on other planets eventually became quantum too. Okay. What if this isn't the case, though? What if... Okay, hear me out here. This is going to be a long one now, because now I've got theorizing to do, but hear me out. What if the eye of the universe literally is like the center of reality? And all things that exist in this universe come from the eye. Like, maybe the eye is, I don't know, where the Big Bang happened or something, right? And from that space, all matter has come. And what if, potentially, that's still the case? What if things are still coming from the eye, but they're all things that match what exists in reality, right? So, like, I'm thinking maybe that's how Dark Bramble comes to be, right? Like, there's a seed of Dark Bramble on Timber Hearth. What if that didn't come from Dark Bramble itself, but that came from the Eye of the Universe? Like, it just, get, it just got shot out of the Eye and rocketed through space until it happened to crash on a planet, in our case, Timber Hearth. And, like, maybe slowly over time, various different planets are going to be parasitized by Dark Bramble maybe that's how seeds of trees and life and like microbial beings and stuff wind up on different planets they shoot out of the eye on rocks or just individually or whatever and come to exist on a planet and that's how life is seeded on that planet right it could certainly make sense and like in a way that raw life matter would be like its form would be undetermined until it was seen by something else right so it's like it could all even just come out as primordial soup but then something else that was also primordial soup but now exists as a, a semi-sentient being observes it and it becomes something else right maybe I don't know I'm completely just completely shooting off the cuff here but like it seems possible at least Okay. Explain me. I mean, they have to know about us, right? They found us on Timber Hearth way back when. And that still doesn't explain how you're alive. I imagine your purpose here is the same as mine, to learn about and to find the eye of the universe. I'm unsure how you arrived here, however. Perhaps you came from another star system as my clan originally did. Well, no. You're... Your people know about us. I mean, I guess we were probably not evolved when you first met us, but... Okay. Uh, identify. Identify yourself! Friend or foe? I am Solanum, and no my. My clan arrived in this star system before my birth. We call... Oh, no, we did that one already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like rapidly swapping these stones around, and Solanum's like, "Hold on, hold on! I've got to, I've got to punch the text into my staff." We are orbiting the eye of the universe now, although we cannot see it; only the quantum moon's reflection of it. The eye is older than the universe itself, and my clan believes it dwells in an extremely distant orbit around this star system. Yeah, we saw that. We saw that in the prediction in the observatory. This is the quantum moon where we both are standing. Despite also orbiting other celestial bodies, the quantum moon is the eye of the universe's moon. Okay. I've never met one of your kind before. It's an honor to speak with you. I particularly admire your four eyes. There are many questions I would ask if I could comprehend your language. You have my gratitude for understanding mine. Is that everything there is to see? We can't talk anymore. Are we able to, like, maybe reverse the order of stuff and get different text?
Huh. I guess we've seen all of this before. Are there any permutations that we failed to get? I feel like we must be missing something here. I mean, maybe not, but... Oh, wait, can we do blue and blue? Oh, we can! Okay, cool. I thought to do orange and orange, but not blue and blue for some reason. Okay. Is this your first time on the quantum moon? It's my first time here. Or, oh, not here, too. It's just, it's my first time here. If you come here looking for answers, I hope you find them. Okay, but, like, listen... Like, the logs on Solanum's ship, like, they launched before the Nomai were eradicated by the ghost matter. Which was years and years and years and years and years ago. So how are they still alive? I don't understand. Okay, um, so me and you. I might even break this up into two parts, honestly. We do not have much connection, you and I. Still, this encounter feels special. I hope you won't mind if I think of you as a friend. Of course! How could we not be friends together in this place? Me and the Eye of the Universe. Suppose you could reach the Eye of the Universe. Would you try to enter it? What do you imagine the effects of a conscious observer might be? I, well, I mean, I guess we can't actually see it. I guess that'll just take us out of the moon. Okay, so... Maybe you and the eye. Many in my clan have believed the eye called to us for a particular purpose. When I was a child, I used to believe the eye was malevolent, to have lured my clan to this star system, only to then vanish from them so completely. But I don't fear the eye anymore. In fact, it became my fondest hope to see the eye itself someday. But I fear this may be beyond my reach. You may think I'm strange, but I have a hypothesis that I may not be entirely alive. Perhaps my journey has reached its end. Okay, so see... This is interesting, right? Because I think we saw a text from Solonum maybe... Maybe on Brittle Hollow, where they were talking about how they used to, like, they used to fear the eye, or, like, hate it or something, but then they came to realize that, like, there wasn't any malevolent action to it or whatever. And so we're seeing that repeated here. Um, also, you may think I'm strange, but I have a hypothesis that I may not be entirely alive. This is a Schrodinger's cat situation, isn't it? Because Solonum is simultaneously alive and dead. We've seen Solonum dead on the Quantum Moon, but now we've also seen Solonum alive on the Quantum Moon. What does that mean for her? I think maybe Solonum was female? Maybe? What? Is, I'm going to go with it. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I think... I wonder if she can tell. I mean, she has a hypothesis about it, so she must be able to feel it in some way. I mean, she would have been here for thousands of years, but, like, only just arrived here in her mind. Why? Is it just the nature of the quantum moon being around the eye of the universe? Is Or is it just because, like, she died? She must have died when the ghost matter went over everything. But because she was technically in two places at once... She's also alive, but maybe kind of, like, unstuck in time a little bit. Like, maybe being around the eye of the universe... God, this is, yeah, super theorizing time. Super, super theorizing, bros. But she must have... All Nomai, or anyone, I guess, must be anchored in time when they're on the quantum moon by, technically speaking, being in the solar system and at the eye simultaneously, right? But if the version of you that's killed, or the version of you that's in the solar system is killed, like when the ghost matter washed over everything, 
your only existence now is around the eye, and that maybe makes you timeless, sort of? Like, time must not work here the same way that it, or the way it works elsewhere. Like, kind of like a black hole situation. And if you're at the eye, if you're at the center of the universe, like, I can't think of a more black holey location, right? Jeez, okay. Um. Oh, no! No, I'm running out of time! No, 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 Okay. I imagine you've noticed the quantum moon changes in appearance depending on which location it is currently orbiting. For instance, the moon looks quite different when orbiting Giant's Deep than it does when orbiting the Hourglass Twins. Because the quantum moon clearly changes in its different forms, the eye, being this moon's primary location, must be similarly malleable. From this, we can hypothesize that the eye represents extreme changeability. Yeah, 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 that's what I was talking about. That said, despite its malleable nature, the quantum moon becomes locked to one specific version of itself when it is consciously observed. But what would happen if a conscious observer were to enter the eye? So you'd be seen from within from rather than from without. Uh, shit, I don't know what other options we've done. Uh, me and the moon? Maybe? I'm sure there's options I'll have missed here, and I, if there are, I don't have time to get them all, but... No, I guess we did see this. Uh, you and the moon? Maybe we did get everything, I don't know. I completely lost track, I've been too busy theorizing. Okay, here we go. Like many of my clan before me, I journeyed here to see the quantum moon's reflection of the eye. This is the closest any of us have come to seeing the eye itself. You may think I'm strange, but I have a hypothesis that I may be entirely may not be entirely alive. Solonim, you're great. Uh, I need to see where what's going on around here. Nothing. All right. What if we just What if we just go? What if we just leap into the reflection of the eye? Go! 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 Whoa! What? 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 What was that effect? Did we get unstuck in time too? Maybe. But it, that looked like ice. Wow, okay, uh... There was a lot to unpack there. Holy... Okay, we gotta take a look at the logs quick. Whoa, lag. We gotta take a look at the logs, and then I gotta call it here, and like... This is definitely... Well, maybe it'll be a two-parter, I don't know. Sixth location. It feels like a lot more things got updated in the logs than this. I'm at a living gnomai named Solonim on the South Pole. The quantum moon is the eye of the universe's moon. At this location, the quantum moon becomes a reflection of the eye itself. The eye is likely the source of all macroscopic quantum phenomena in the solar system. Solonim wonders what would happen if a conscious observer were to enter the eye. Solonim has a hypothesis that she may not be entirely alive. Yeah, there we go. What the hell, man? Are we done on the quantum moon? No way. Holy crap, I guess we are. Whoa, okay. Oh, wow, okay. Um. Wow. Well, we're not done. That much is obvious. Um, being on the quantum moon didn't take us to the eye of the universe, and apparently it can't, based on what Solonim was saying. Which means... We still have a long way to go, I guess. Holy crap. Well, whether this is one part or two parts, I would love to see your guys' thoughts on my theorizing... Just what you think about all of this. I mean, again, I know most of you who have watched or who are watching this have played the game already. Not all of you, but most of you, it seems like. So you know the answers. But whether you've played the game or not, give me some thoughts here because I, I need to bounce some ideas off of people here. This is... Wow. Okay. All right. All right. That's... 
We call that progress around these parts, let me tell you. Okay, well, I'm just going to sit here pontificating forever, so if I don't wrap this up. So we're going to wrap this up. Thank you all so much for watching. <laughs> I do very much appreciate it. If you know someone that you think would enjoy this series and discussions on quantum mechanics, if these are even accurate quantum mechanics. But yeah, if you know someone that you think would enjoy this series or any of my other series, if you could shoot them a link, that'd be very much appreciated. Until the next time, though, I hope you all have a good night. Stay safe and healthy out there. And remember, be good to each other. Bye now.